हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन सो टुडे इज 15th ऑफ अगस्त फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एक्सटेंड माय हार्टली विशेस टू ऑल ऑफ यू हैप्पी इंडिपेंडेंस डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो कमिंग टू द टॉपिक ऑफ सॉल्ट एनालिसिस दिस इज द टॉपिक व्हिच इज बीइंग आस्क्ड बाय मेनी ऑफ यू बिकॉज़ आईआईटी एडवांस पेपर इज कमिंग वेरी क्लोज एंड एज रिगार्ड टू दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक आई माय सेल्फ फील इट इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक इट गिव्स यू अ overall grip on your inorganic chemistry it gives you 360 view of entire of inorganic chemistry along with some good important concept of physical chemistry in terms of equilibria and precipitation so as regard to this particular topic uh, first let us ask ourselves what basically do we mean by salt when i talk of a salt salt is basically a chemical compound which is made up of cation and anion this is what primarily we technically would say as to be salt and this cation and anion can be monoatomic cationic or anionic species or polyatomic now as regard to the salt this salt is basically generally is being made definition from a reaction of a neutralization reaction where acid and base reaction happens to occur just like if i simply would take a very simple of all examples in which you treated with hcl very basic example and this gives you nacl salt aqueous plus water this is what is uh, a acid base reaction where we say this has to be base this has to be acid and here na positive and cl negative uh, nacl is being formed which is in aqueous medium and now this nacl containing water if kept in a dry oven or just allow it to undergo evaporation so nacl is being obtained now the point here is this na positive which i received from any which is our cation and the species which we get from the hcl is the anion that is cl negative is the anion so we in this chapter technically would say this has to be cation has to be basic radical now here is the point to be remembered and similarly anion can be said as acid radical this is the Uh, technically we use or speak this terms in this particular chapter basic radical doesn't mean that this na positive is basic in species it may or may not any basic radical may be creating when put into water may create a solution basic or not so here the definition entirely is based on the fact that from where i i am getting say for example if i write b positive a negative so b positive is a cation it must have been taken from a base and a negative is a anion which must have been taken in a acid during a neutralization reaction as a result these are called as basic uh, basic radical this is said as basic radical and this is said as acidic radical so if i have to define what is basic radical a radical or a ion or i will say a cation received from or cation which we Uh, uh, cation or radical obtained from obtained from base and similarly acid radical is a anion anion which which we obtain from from acid so this is the basic of all uh, uh, definition so the point here is that uh, first if we actually have to understand uh, the topic of salt analysis one uh, salt analysis i just would uh, recommend you to just go through this uh, video session which i uploaded 2 3 days back solubility of inorganic salts because this in a way would address many thing in this chapter because in this chapter we have to take into consideration lot of lot of aspect in terms of the solubility because we need to do lot of precipitation reaction so you need to have a fair idea which salt which salt is uh, you know water soluble which is not so just to give you a brief idea or a just a overview of that particular video always always remember almost all salts of alkali metal salts and ammonium salts are water soluble these are water soluble so if you come across any salt of sodium potassium and ammonium these are majorly water soluble similarly as regard to anion nitrates chlorate perchlorate and acetates these are also water soluble and as regard regard to chloride bromide and iodide so i am writing here a list of water soluble salts 
of these cations and anoints. But here you would find that there is except three things which you should always remember Hg positive, Ag positive, Hg22 positive and lead 2 positive. And these are the, if you could remember, these are the uh, cations of group 1 which get precipitated as chloride. So these are the three cations which you always have to remember their chloride bromide iodides are not water soluble otherwise almost all salts of chloride bromide iodide are water soluble here you can add two three more cupric one positive bismuth iodide these are also water insoluble along with hgi2 but majorly you have to remember these three where we have a mnemonic also age honge punjabi ag hg pb these are water insoluble as chlorides sulfates of almost every uh, uh, sulfates are also water soluble except for alkaline earth metal except i am saying once again except for alkaline earth metals like calcium magnesium calcium strontium barium and lead 2 positive these sulfates are water insoluble otherwise other sulfates are water soluble fluorides are almost uh, water soluble except for uh, alkaline earth metal here magnesium would come into play magnesium calcium uh, strontium barium these are water insoluble uh, fluorides uh, along with pv2 positive so here is the these are the water soluble salts and similarly water insoluble salts are of these this is very important from the anion anion analysis uh, carbonates phosphate chromate oxalate sulfides are almost water insoluble except of course which we have already written except for for ammonium if ammonium is there or alkali metal cations alkali metal cations which we have already spoken about that alkali metal salts are almost water soluble of every species and similarly hydroxides and oxides are water insoluble for most of the compounds these this particular slide except here i should also write except alkali metals alkali metal hydroxides are water soluble along with alkaline earth metal is barium hydroxide this is also water soluble so the point here is what i am trying to say here is this this is the journal journal uh, statement i am addressing there could be here and there few exceptions but generally these are the things that carbonates phosphate chromate oxalate sulfides are uh, water insoluble now coming on to the topic of qualitative analysis now in the qualitative analysis you have to do into consideration you have to just take the salt first and do the preliminary investigation in which you are able to in where you have to see into the color smell solubility is very important as i said and the ph this point would address many things that if you put a salt into water uh, the ph is less than 7 or more than 7 or 7 in a way would tell you many things that it is containing a salt which is having a uh, which is strongly basic or strongly acidic or neutral flame test borax b test and charcoal cavity test these tests are quite important if we actually are doing practically in the paper practical exam is there then because you can physically see then uh, the density of the salt heavy or light salt it is on this i will be speaking on these uh, preliminary investigate uh, investigation at the end of the salt analysis because i just don't want to put my energy and your energy onto this because it take into consideration lot of facts and figures in terms of information which we will dig into this a little later first we want to explain the things with a more logical aspect so first we want to do the detection of anion radicals that the negative anionic species of the salt how we can distinguish or segregate them among the different anions here we have to use the wet test wet test means we will be doing the system in an aqueous medium then we do the detection of basic radical so this particular salt analysis session would may divide into three four parts um, um, first i will take in the acid radical then basic radical then problem solving on that and lastly i will do the uh, flame test borax peter charcoal cavity test these are also very important but from the iit point of view theoretical basis we would be addressing these two first 
and lastly we will do the specific testing once you have done the uh, once you have segregated the radicals into some parts cations into some parts then individually you have to see into which cation and anion it would be for that you have to do the specific so this is the fourth part specific testing now coming on to the fact that what are there in our syllabus these are the cations and anions which are there in our syllabus these are the cations and anions which are there in our syllabus so how these cations i uh, many of you have identified the fact that i intentionally have placed these cations systematically uh, this is one uh, are you able to see it so i intentionally have put into systematic order why i have put it into systematic order this is in the later stage of uh, basic radical segregation we will uh, put this ammonium ion in group 1 this is in group 2 this is group 1 2 group 3 group 4 group 5 and group 6 why we put these into this sort of thing because basic radical segregation is very very systematic which primarily take into consideration heterogeneous equilibria e involving precipitation selective precipitation from where you can get with the many things but as regard to the anion radical there is no it is not as systematic as is the basic radical uh, segregation but acid radical also logically can be separated on some chemical behavior which i am going to let you know in a few minutes now the point here is that as regard to the basic radical cations how these radicals these cations are to be remember which in which category they will fall for that i will be making the special video and uh, how to remember these that which cation would fall under which category i generally recommend to there could be a mnemonic also in many of my fellow teachers uh, happens to tell you the mnemonics that by this terminology you can remember this but i always would i personally do like always to go with a little logical way or uh, with the help of periodic table itself just like if i just would mark group one group zero for ammonia group one two two is the important which is the which take into consideration many things uh, many cations three four five and six so the simple uh, simple viewpoint is what are what are the cations actually when uh, there are lot many metals in the periodic table but which cations we are more interested in by which we can easily do their segregation is uh, if i just would uh, see into the fact that here you would find strontium barium radium these strontium barium radium would fall under the category of uh, group 5 strontium barium not radium calcium uh, i missed one uh, magnesium calcium should come here calcium so calcium strontium barium these these would fall under the category of group 5 why i am doing so so that you could feel that how the teacher is uh, uh, helping you to recall the things in a systematic way this this would you would find this would be more interesting and easy rather than going for the mnemonics then the fourth group then the fourth group uh, is a very interesting one because uh, in the fourth group if you would just see iron cobalt nickel manganese cobalt nickel zinc i just have circled the four entities zinc copper nickel manganese just place it here manganese two positive cobalt two positive nickel two positive zinc two positive these would fall under the category of four and similarly if you would see the group number three group number three in the group number three you have to take into consideration chromium aluminium uh, iron and from here aluminium so here you have chromium 3 positive iron 3 positive al3 positive these would fall under the group number 3 and group number 6 would belong to magnesium sodium and potassium magnesium group number 6 magnesium sodium and potassium so this way i i have almost done everything now you are able to see few things left now in the group 1 this is more popular ag positive hg22 positive and pb2 positive this would fall under this category so where do you see pb this is pb ag and 
uh, what we are left with is hg so this gets here hg so these would for this you have a mnemonic also aage honge honge punjabi so this this is one of the way similarly many of the books are writing all these remem uh, all these things to be remembered in a in a in a in a mnemonic way that can you you can always go for but i personally uh, don't like that but anyhow anyhow you can go that way also now the point here is now you are left with the one which is a little typical one where you would see uh uh group 2 which take into consideration many so basically group 2 is divided into two part group 2 a b this that thing we will discuss in the cation analysis now group 2 a and group 2 b now what are to be placed here now whatever cations you could see in the second transition series is one we are left with the copper let me take a different color for this uh one is the copper this we are left with cadmium we are left with so i just would mark copper this also is said as copper group copper 2 positive cadmium 2 positive this we are left with and this also is a overlapping one hg 2 positive and uh, at times you would also see bismuth 3 uh, positive here and along with that pv 2 positive also is seen so bismuth comes and at times let over, get overlapped here and this is the group 2 and other group 2 elements in the 2b are the left out these species which i should mark it with another color this is this one these are the these are the heavy metal cation of the p block which we are left with these are sn2 positive sn4 positive arsenic 3 positive arsenic 5 positive and bismuth 5 positive these are the species which we are left here in the group 2 so group 2b so in totality this is the way you can now if you remember this thing in this way in the periodic table you are able to see what are the i think i missed the antimony here antimony 5 positive in bismuth got repeated here it should be antimony antimony 5 positive and antimony 3 positive can also be there so the point here is which you always have to remember is that basically this way of remembering would give you a clear idea in the entire periodic table what are the cations which you have to segregate so this is my way uh, i hope you liked it and probably in the cation analysis we will discuss it once again now as per regard to the anion analysis first what you have to do in the anion analysis first the salt solution is to be made whatever 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 salt is being given to you let's say this is the salt is being given to you and you just have dissolved this into water and if it on dissolution with water it perfectly get dissolved then the story is easy we have to do analyze this z negative but generally it is recommended to place or to make sodium carbonate extract sodium carbonate extract would help us to um, uh, remove this cation because we just don't want this cation to interfere while we are doing the anion analysis so what basically might have happened that or sodium carbonate extract is generally recommended for those where the uh, salt is insoluble in water so in that you take a salt along with sodium carbonate aqueous solution heat it strongly for 10 15 minutes so this crystal dissolves and metal carbonate get precipitated along with the formation of sodium salt of that particular anion because we already have spoken about the fact that the um, anion of alkali metal salts or sodium salt of any anion would be water soluble so this is water soluble now this water soluble entity would be taken in a filtrate and that filtrate is now would be used further for the investigation now the fact is that almost i have wrote all the anions here which are there in our syllabus and now our endeavor is to segregate all of these anions now these anion segregation would happen on the basis of some basis basis of some chemical behavior so they would be associated with some chemical behavior so segregation segregation 
segregation would be based on some uh, chemical behavior that chemical behavior can be acid base behavior or the redox behavior there are some 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 uh, anions which would show oxidizing or reducing character redox behavior or some it may involve some heterogeneous concept of heterogeneous equilibria where we need to do a selective precipitation we need to do a selective precipitation so primarily we would be engaging in the cation analysis when i say cation analysis is more systematic it majorly be using the selective precipitation as one of the ways of segregation but here it can be on the basis of acid base on the basis of redox or on the basis of heterogeneous equilibria now these conceptual understanding you should be very clear with so first i will take up these three topics in detail so first is acid base behavior if i talk of now if you would see these anions these are highly basic these are basic anions these are basic anions as in when you put this into water any salt of sulfide carbonate or phosphate when put into water this will make the solution basic because of the hydrolysis of anion so they will undergo anionic hydrolysis they would undergo anionic hydrolysis and would create a solution basic and as a matter of fact kb for these would range between dissociation constant as a base uh, for all of these would uh, range between 10 raised to minus 2 to 10 raised to minus 3 so this is a tentative range i am writing 10 raised to minus 2 to 10 raised to power okay let me write it 10 raised to minus 2 to 10 raised to minus 3 and these are also uh, 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 these are also undergo uh, anionic hydrolysis but not so basic so these are <coughs> less basic anions these are less basic anions but they do undergo anionic hydrolysis but not to an extent as is being done by the first set of uh, sulfide carbonate and phosphate now here what you also have to remember the kb for this ranges between 10 raised to power minus 7 to 10 raised to power minus 12 so these are not very basic but definitely they will uh, make solutions slightly alkaline not very alkaline slightly alkaline the ph would be slightly above the 7 and these are the salts which do not undergo hydrolysis do not undergo undergo hydrolysis so when they do not undergo hydrolysis these anionic species would always be said as neutral ions these are sold, uh, called as neutral anions so they do not undergo any so, so the these salts would not react with water so first understanding you need to see that some of the anions are basic some are slightly basic and as a matter of fact if you would talk about borate ion borate ion when put into water would do the thing altogether differently so so you just would add three water into it so what or rather i would write four water into it so what i should be getting here is h3bo or rather i should write it like this boh negative this species is uh, generated for oh negative and along with that what you happen to get is h positive so in fact this borate ion when put into water make the solution acidic so uh, the anionic species which are creating the solution acidic are very less but majorly they are basic or neutral so one viewpoint you always keep this in mind now another thing which you should focus about that there are some anions which i have just wrote it here or along with that i can add one more is thiosulfate ion so these are the some of the species into which which when you add dilute acid like hcl or dilute sulfuric acid but these should be non oxidizing non oxidizing means that they should not do any sort of the acid in itself do not undergo any sort of uh, reduction as an oxidizing agent and here i just would mark one thing dilute sulfuric acid versus concentrated sulfuric acid uh, dilute sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid majorly would be act as acid and not as an oxidizing agent but as a matter of fact when you make it concentrated that it can act as an acid as well as it can act as an oxidizing agent so do keep this in your mind when you are using concentrated sulfuric acid it do show oxidizing nature also 
now all of these anions when put into acid so what they will do so if i would say bisulfite ion or carbonate ion or nitrite ion so when you put this into acid they would make a a protonic acid which is thermally not very stable which is thermally not very stable so they would change into uh, these particular uh, this would change into nitrous acid this would change into carbonic acids this sulfurous acid and when you heat it these are not stable protonic acids when you heat it so they tend to lose some gas just like in this so2 this would uh, lead carbon dioxide and this on high um, uh, further dissociation would produce water no and no2 gas and uh, similarly there is a another anion which i just have marked is thiosulfate thiosulfate also uh, would change into sulfurous acid which on heating produces water sulfur and so2 now the point here is what you what i am trying to say here is that there are anions which when put into acid generate a thermally unstable protonic acid thermally thermally unstable acids these thermally unstable acid may produce some gas this gas is let's say uh, if i just would uh, see the orange marked one these two are the gases which are odorless but the first one is having a uh, smell but carbon dioxide would not be having smell similarly no2 is a brown gas and along with it if you have sulfide ion sulfide ion also when put into uh, you know it is being treated with dilute hcl or dilute sulfuric acid would take h positive and produces h2s gas this h2s gas again would have a rotten egg smell so the point here is there are some uh, anions on the basis of this discussion we in a in a very soon would will segregate these anions on the basis of their reaction with an acid dilute acid where they tend to form a thermally unstable acid and once they form thermally unstable we simply would heat and evolve out the gas and thereafter when the gas is being evolved we will do the testing of that gas in particular to identify a particular type of anion and also you should know about the fact that one viewpoint is that uh, they tend to make the solution alkaline or neutral or uh, basic uh, in terms of their acid base behavior as an anion second is uh, would they be producing any sort of gas when they are treated with some mineral acid uh, but that acid should be non oxidizing or at times you would see that in particular anion when you put a acid the color get changed just like in a chromate ion it is yellow and when you put that into h positive into it it changes to dichromate which is orange color and this orange color can turn up back to the same yellow in uh, chromate ion when you make the solution basic so this is the way which you always should remember that some of the anion can tend to show acid base behavior second was the case of redox behavior redox when i am saying redox behavior i am saying there are some anions which happens to uh, make the solution uh, some 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 anions would act as a reducing agent some act as an oxidizing agent and other can act as a reducing agent as well as oxidizing agent depending upon the uh, reaction condition so this again is very important to remember just like if i just tell you that iodide sulfide and sulfite ion these have the tendency to act as an reducing agent they tend to act as an reducing agent and when they act as an reducing agent they just like i negative happens to go from minus 1 to 0 it tend to produce uh in the acidic solution they tend to produce the iodine iodide ion uh, iodine similarly sulfide also because here the fact is that this is in minus 1 minus 2 and this is in plus 4 oxidation state they they may undergo a loss of electron so they may act as an reducing agent similarly there are some anions which tend to act as an oxidizing agent from here the important one are chromate where it is in plus 6 this is in plus 6 plus 7 permanganate and manganate and nitrate ion which is a strong oxidizing agent and similarly sulfate also as i said few minutes back sulfate sulfate when it is in a dilute form 
it more of a often act as an acid rather than and not as an oxidizing agent but when it is concentrated it is a very good oxidizing agent so make it a point this always you have to remember so that is during the classification we will be doing it that way that whether you are using dilute or concentrated so sulfuric acid when you are talking of but sulfate as a fact uh, as i said uh, you need to uh, remember its concentration so the point here is similarly nitrite ion can act as reducing as well as oxidizing agent so in the acidic medium it tend to act as a better oxidizing agent rather than a weak reducing agent and similarly there are some anions these carbonate ion which is in plus 4 oxidation state do not do not uh, undergo any redox reaction so these anions would not undergo any sort of redox reaction so these anions we would segregate on the basis of acid base behavior or on the basis of precipitation so this is the second thing which you always have to keep it in mind third is the precipitation way in the precipitation way that is the third part uh, we talk of precipitation in the in the term of uh, heterogeneous equilibria that where you have some anions with you into this you are adding some cation and majorly we will be using either agno3 as a main precipitating re reagent and barium chloride for most of the anionic precipitation these may often be used but here i just would because i just want to make a double sure that you actually do know how the precipitation is being done so here i am giving you a little uh, uh, viewpoint from the ionic equilibrium so that in the future because in the cationic precipitation everywhere we will be using precipitation in detail just like in a in a 2 3 minutes i just would give you a little idea that how is it to be done say for example you are being given a 0.2 molar solution containing chloride bromide and iodide so these are water soluble salt of chloride bromide iodide placed in this aqueous solution into which you are adding solid agno3 uh, crystal by crystal or um, if you have a aqueous solution very drop by drop and these are the ksp at some uh, at some temperature hypothetically i have taken these ksp values uh, you need to check whether it i'm i'm just taking some values agcl is this 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 now the point here is that if i keep on adding ag positive from the above who is going to undergo precipitation first and who would precipitate at the last so for here we have to take into consideration the concept of ionic equilibrium where we talk about that ionic product ionic product when exceed solubility product precipitation occurs now what does it mean and if the ionic product is ionic product of the ions which are supposedly be doing the precipitation if their concentration product is lesser than the greater than ksp then precipitation occur otherwise not now here uh, the ksp of agcl is 10 raised power minus 10 i have taken and chloride and concentration in the solution is 10 raised power minus uh, 2 so that means the ag ion required for precipitation ag ion required for precipitation of silver chloride would be 10 raised power minus 8 10 raised power minus 8 uh, um, moles of ag uh, ag positive when we put into this solution chloride agcl would start undergoing precipitation similarly if i have to see for the bromide for bromide i have taken the ksp as 10 raised power minus 12 and the ag positive concentration we want to find out and br concentration we have taken 10 raised power minus 2 so divided by 10 raised power minus 2 so this comes out to be ag and required for the bromide ion concentration uh, bromide ion precipitation is 10 raised power minus 10 and similarly for iodide if i would do hurriedly so the ksp i have taken 10 raised power minus 14 iodide concentration is 10 raised power minus 2 so ag ion concentration required for the precipitation of iodide would be so ag ion concentration required is 10 raised power minus 12 so here from here what we are able to understand that for the precipitation of agcl you would require this much of ag for bromide you would require this much isn't it and for uh, what i would say iodide you require this much so as a matter of fact so here since the stoichiometry of the all the three uh, iodides uh, all the three halides of silver are same 
तो वी वुड बी सेइंग आयोडाइड वुड अंडर गो प्रेसिपिटेशन फर्स्ट बिकॉज एज सुन एज ए टेन रिस्पा माइनस ट्वेल्व ए जी आयन्स वुड फॉल इन टू एट आफ्टर दिस वॉट एवर एक्स्ट्रा नाउ यू आर गोइंग टू डू द प्रेसिपिटेशन ऑफ आयोडाइड इन स्टार्ट हैपनिंग एंड देर आफ्टर इफ वंस दिस हैज स्टार्टेड टेकिंग प्लेस एंड यू कीप ऑन एडिंग ए जी पॉजिटिव सो देर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दैट एट वॉट कंसेंट्रेट द सेकेंड आयन प्रेसिपिटेशन वुड अकर और वॉट एट वॉट कंसेंट्रेशन थर्ड आयन प्रेसिपिटेशन वुड अकर और देर इज अनदर ब्यूटिफुल क्वेश्चन फॉर माइनिंग इक्लिवरियम दैट वेन सेकेंड प्रेसिपिटेशन जस्ट अकर्ड हाउ मच ऑफ आयोडाइड इज लेफ्ट स्टिल इन द सोल्यूशन सो दैट वी विल टेक इन सम अदर वीडियो नॉट एट एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो वट वी आर ट्राइंग टू से हेयर इज दैट फॉर द प्रेसिपिटेशन ऑफ आयोडाइड बिकॉज इट इज ए जी आई इज मूव इज द के एस पी ऑफ दिस इज लीस्ट सो इट वुड प्रेसिपिटेट फर्स्ट ऑन एडिशन ऑफ ए जी पॉजिटिव आइंस एंड द क्वान्टिटी रिक्वायर्ड इज दिस मच सो दिस आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गिव यू अ बिट ऑफ आइडिया नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू द फैक्ट दैट दिस एज आई सेड दिस ए जी एन ओ थ्री प्रेसिपिटेशन इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इन द एनोइन प्रेसिपिटेशन always remember that almost all annoyance uh, all annoyance get precipitated with agno3 whatever annoyance we just have listed above all those annoyance get precipitated with agno3 provided this is the most important statement the solution to be neutral so agno3 agno3 precipitate almost all annoyance annoyance in neutral condition in neutral condition means ph should be near to the 7 if some salt if some anion is making the solution acidic or basic you have to uh, you know set the ph with the addition of ammonia so that the neutral condition is achieved and then only the precipitation would occur now as a matter of fact here we have written that except for these because why these would not precipitate because the uh, the 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 overall when we talk of their uh, silver nitrite and silver sulfate these would not get precipitated easily because the fact is their uh, their uh, ksp value is very high so simple reason is that because for their precipitation lot of silver ion is required to achieve that high value of ksp so that is why they would not precipitate easily now similarly if i would move further all silver salts dissolve in strongly acidic medium so this is the most most important always remember this is the most important all silver salt dissolve in strongly acidic medium whatever silver salts you have they dissolve in silver uh, acidic medium except for ag2s this is very important agi agcl and agbr these 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 salts of silver would not dissolve in acidic medium very soon we will be using tip, using this statement for uh, segregating the anions now the fact is now you could ask me why is it so why why uh, all silver salt dissolve strongly in acidic medium is the fact that if say for example i have i have with me say for example silver carbonate as soon as you put that into h positive what would happen this anionic part if i just would write this anionic part this anionic part easily would dissolve in the sense that this anionic part would take h positive and change to carbon dioxide and water and this carbon dioxide easily get evolved so the fact is either the anion would just lose uh, uh, make a protonic acid and then start losing the gas once that gas is being lost all of these equilibria which i should mark it like this once any evolution of gas would take place all these equilibrium would move forward as a result that particular salt dissolves into it or they will make a conjugate acid of that anion just like if you have po4 3 negative it would not produce any gas but when you put this into this this particular species this phosphate ion turn up to this so you would not no longer be finding any phosphate ion into the system so what i am saying is if you say for example you have silver phosphate with you and what would happen silver and you dissolve this into acid this phosphate is put into strongly acidic medium so when you put this into strongly acidic medium phosphate ion would change into this one so system would not have phosphate ion now because this is a weak acid and this weak acid would not further dissociate to give you any phosphate ion 
सो एज अ रिजल्ट द फॉस्फेट आयन कंसेंट्रेशन वुड डिक्रीज एंड दिस इक्म वुड मूव फॉरवर्ड सो दिस इज द बिट ऑफ एक्सप्लेनेशन टू एक्सप्लेन दैट फैक्ट नाउ द पॉइंट हेयर इज नाउ यू मे आस्क फॉर द सिल्वर आयोडाइड दैट वाई इट वुड नॉट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई जस्ट डिजोल्व दिस लाइक दिस ए जी पॉजिटिव आई नेगेटिव एंड आई नेगेटिव वुड टेक एच पॉजिटिव बिकॉज स्ट्रॉगली एसिडिक एंड वुड चेंज इन टू एच आई बट एच आई इज ए स्ट्रॉग एसिड स्ट्रॉग एसिड सो इट वुड डिसोशिएट बैक इन टू दिस एंड इफ इट डिसोशिएट बैक इन टू दिस देर वुड नॉट बी एनी डिजोल्यूशन द इक्म वुड गो बैकवर्ड ओनली सो दिस इज द व्यू पॉइंट और यू कैन सिंपली से दैट दैट इनोइन ऑफ ए इनोइन ऑफ ए स्ट्रॉग एसिड इनोइन ऑफ ए इनोइन ऑफ ए स्ट्रॉग एसिड वेन is present with a silver salt it generally don't dissolve in strongly acidic medium next is which is again very important all salts of silver are soluble in ammonia this always you always have to remember any salt which you have of uh, silver salt of uh, silver salt which you have made from the silver nitrate treating with anion if you dissolve it in ammonia it will diss dissolve because of the complex formation except for these two again this is the fact which you always have to remember with and lastly we were expecting silver sulfide to be get dissolved in acidic medium this is a very important question that if you have silver sulfide if you put this into um, acid why did not it dissolve because sulfide can take h positive and change into hs negative or sulfide would take 2h positive would change into h2s now both of these are weak acids both of these are weak acids and these weak acids would dissociate to give sulfide ion to a very less quantity they will dissociate to give sulfide ion to very less uh, very uh, very less amount of sulfide ion is being given but the fact here is that the ksp of ksp of silver sulfide is almost near to 10 is to minus 50 so the sulfide ion required for precipitation of uh, Sil uh, silver sulfide uh, if i have to precipitate silver ions with the sulfide ions the sulfide ion quantity required is very very less to do the precipitation of ag ags ag2s so the fact here is if you dissolve it into acid this would produce weak acid this weak acid although would dissociate very less but it would provide sufficient sulfide ion so that the equilibrium would turn up back so that is why it generally don't dissolve in acidic medium this is the fact which you all again has to remember with now coming on to so i talked about three things acid base behavior acid base behavior of uh, anionic species then we talked about redox behavior where it may act as a reducing agent oxidizing agent or both then we talked about the precipitation how precipitation do occur in the precipitation we mainly be focusing silver nitrate and barium and chloride majorly and uh, if you are able to understand that the classification now would become easier now see into the discussion now now the point is preliminary test of the anions if practically if i have to see that these are the anions and i have to you know segregate them on the preliminary basis so what first i will make uh, the aqueous solution aqueous solution of these anions in three test tube in one test tube i just would add mncl2 mncl2 and once i add mncl2 this is a reducing agent this is a reducing agent which you always have to remember in this reducing agent along with that you have to add hcl here i would add ferric chloride along with k3fecn6 and a bit of acid and lastly i would add concentrated sulfuric acid these are the three things which i preliminarily on the preliminary basis i will do so from here what i am able to see here is this is a reducing agent so i would get with the anions which are oxidizing in nature so brown black type of precipitate are uh, achieved here with and here i would able to see the anions which would be oxidizing in nature just like these or dichromate ion these oxidizing anions would be segregated because it is a reducing agent and here what would happen uh, i am able to see those anions here persian blue color is being achieved persian blue 
color is being achieved here what we are able to see here is this is a oxidizing agent and here i am able to see a reducing annoyance like this sulfide or sulfite or iodide or nitrite these are reducing annoyance and how does it do that i am going to show in the next slide and similarly in the acid if you treat it with acid what you are able to see is uh, a basic species like carbonate sulfite sulfide thiosulfate these these would react with h positive and evolve out some gas as i said earlier also or no2 negative or because it is a concentrated chloride bromide iodide could also react with because of the fact it is now may act as oxidizing agent it will convert bromide and iodide to produce a gas like bromine and iodine or uh, you may have chromate ions because chromate ion in the acidic medium would change into the color so these are the preliminary thing which you may come across when preliminary test of anion is to be done just like i have said given by so this is these precipit so here you are able to see because this is a reducing agent so oxidizing anions can be identified and this is a uh, uh, oxidizing agent oxidizing agent so this is what you call it as persian blue complex so here you are able to see the reducing anions and similarly uh, if gas evolution you have to see the gas evolution would happen with the uh, um, if if you have a carbonate ion carbonate ion react with h positive changes to carbonic acid which then evolve out carbon dioxide gas similarly uh, here you would see uh, some uh, colorless gas like uh, uh, sulfide ion also would produce uh, colorless gas h2s but it would have a smell rotten egg smell similarly sulfide ion this would also react with h positive and will produce water and sulfur dioxide it is having a smell of burning sulfur and colored gases can be of no2 negative plus h positive changes to nitrous acid which further decomposes to produce brown fumes of no2 gas or there is a color change in the anion just like chromate would turn to orange that of dichromate so this is the preliminary test which you would come across with uh so uh so this viewpoint always you have to keep it in mind this is the preliminary way by which you just have taken the three test tube these three things are added by adding these three you are able to conceptually understand that the anion is acidic or is it a showing any sort of redox if it is showing any sort of redox it is is it uh, uh, the anionic species is reducing agent or oxidizing agent so this way you can classify the thing and in iit j you would find good number of question based on this viewpoint now now our endeavor is preliminary investigation we have done with now we want to segregate these anions on some sort of grouping so the simple viewpoint is which i intuitively have made which would help you a lot in the final examination we primarily be using now now we would be doing primarily two things acid base behavior and precipitation so first the given anion whatever anions are being given to you into this you just would add dilute acid dilute uh, hcl or dilute h2so4 and just would check uh, any gas being evolved if the gas is being evolved so we can classify on that basis now the gas got out of the system and in the filtrate you still would have some anions if there is no gas evolution so this filtrate would have some anions or if there is a gas formation so the gas would evolve out and you would left with some other anions into that cool the remaining solution of the step 1 add agno3 and just see is there any precipitation happening now this agno3 precipitation is taking place in a acidic medium that is a very important statement which we have marked earlier also that all precipitates of silver in the new in the neutral medium silver almost precipitate all anions but all anions in a acidic medium dissolves except for the three ag2s silver chloride silver bromide and silver iodide and lastly note the color of the precipitate if the precipitate color is clear with you you just would 
separate them uh, the residue would separate it out and the filtrate is still left with some annoyance if filtrate is still left with annoyance just now would add ammonia into it along with if required extra amount of silver nitrate so addition of ammonia is to uh, neutralize the acidity so that neutral condition is generated in the neutral condition some other precipitate of silver now start precipitating and this is the third step and note down the precipitate and see the filtrate and still in the filtrate some annoyance are there that annoyance are what that is very important now let me show you what i am trying to say here i am trying to say here is that uh, these are the annoyance into this you added dilute uh, dilute hcl or dilute sulfuric acid as a consequence of that what you are able to see here is now here you have to be little attentive with so you would find uh, either uh, the formation of uh, h2s gas or carbon dioxide gas or uh, so3 gas or no2 gas so if you are able to see these gas that means this might have came from the sulfide this might have came from the carbonate or bicarbonate this might have produced from uh, so3 2 negative so2 gas or from the thio uh, bisulfite and this might have produced from no2 gas might have produced from no2 gas so if there is some gas formation so that means these annoyance can be there in that particular set of uh, analysis and in the filtrate in the filtrate what may be left these are the species which still are left with now in out of these now we would put silver nitrate now this silver nitrate is added to a filtrate which is acidic acidic filtrate we are adding silver nitrate to a acidic filtrate so here you have to remember although silver will precipitate everything but in the acidic medium ag2s agcl agbr agi these would come out as precipitates these would be precipitates this would precipitate this would precipitate now the point here is you may ask me that's already you have mentioned sulfide in this so sulfide could be overlapping if some amount of sulfide is still there in the filtrate then that could precipitate as ags or as a matter of fact if you are just adding silver nitrate directly into the anionic species and then you are adding acid to it then ags would separate precipitate in this group and now the fact is that whatever silver uh, salts as a precipitate are there in that solution now in the filtrate is phosphate ion dichromate chromate or sulfate these are the species still and along with it nitrate if there is nitrate nitrate is also there uh, these would this would remain in the filtrate now into this you are adding ammonia to uh, you know uh, uh, neutralize the acidity and if required silver nitrate is also added with now here you would see in the neutral conditions who are the species which get precipitated as are silver phosphate silver uh chromate silver uh silver sulfate uh sulfate would not sulfate would not because its solubility is high or if directly you are adding so if there is um, carbonate can also precipitate if we haven't added acid directly or uh, it can re-precipitate but these are the major one which you would come across with okay so these are the or silver dichromate can also precipitate that i haven't wrote so and in the filtrate we still have nitrate and sulfate simply because of the fact that the solubility product of uh, silver nitrate and silver sulfate is high with so what basically we have did so this is this we can classify in group one this i can say in the group 2 and this i can say in the group 3 and this i can say in the group 4 so this is or what i can uh, simply mark it like this that group 1 group 1 i said to those 
anions decompose by strongly acidic solution these are the one which can strongly get ionized uh, strongly get uh, uh, decomposed in the acidic solution here you would also see bisulfite or bicarbonate along with and similarly after this uh, uh, in the group 2 what we are able to see that those anions which when put uh, when treated with uh, dilute hcl or dilute hcl or h2so4 dilute and thereafter you added the agno3 uh, these are the salts which are still stable like agcl agbr agi and if some sulfide is still there in the filtrate it also get precipitated these can be in the group 2 and similarly if i would go for the group 3 here what you are able to see that uh, we have taken the filtrate and uh, precipitate uh, the salt is stable in acidic solution precipitated as silver sal uh, silver salt only in the neutral condition so these are phosphate and chromate majorly and lastly what you are able to see is is uh, the last uh, last one oh sorry last one is this array this group 4 uh, iron stable in dilute acid dilute HCR or dilute H2SO4 but soluble as a silver salt both in acidic and neutral medium are nitrate and sulfate so this is one of the way by which you can do the group uh, division of these anoins in this way so what we have done we added acid removed out the gases because they would make the protonic acid and then silver nitrate and then ammonia is being added and this way we generated the four group and once you got these four groups separated now you would be doing the individual test for all of these anoints another way is which you can do it yourself another precipitating reagent is barium chloride just like if in case you are being given like this for this i just would want you just try this at home and uh, in the next video i will answer it out that if you are being given these anoints with you and into this you are adding barium chloride followed by addition of HCl although barium will precipitate all of these but in acidic medium who are the uh, who all got dissolved into so here the question is asking what is being left at the residue at the last and which anoints are still there in the filtrate so this question you can try at your place another style of classification which is very popular and many of the books are writing classification of of anoints which may also be done on this basis which in a way is already being explained to you that that classification take into consideration the simple viewpoint that uh, uh, which so this this again we have already done here is that another classification is uh, of the acid radicals is class one where uh, when you say the acid radical which fall in the class one here you are treating the species with the acid like dilute sulfuric acid or dilute uh, concentrated sulfuric acid just like if i would mark it here that the annoyance which would fall under the class one is when you treat dilute h2so4 when you add dilute h2so4 to the anionic species such that it evolves out some protonic acid which again would produce some gas just like carbonate or bicarbonate i am here trying my level best to explain you the things logically rather than mugging it that the annoying classification may divide into three categories and what are the things and what are the things you are adding at what time accordingly you can separate out in the form of precipitate just like in this case class one here the class one here we are checking the acid in class 1a we are checking the acidic behavior acidic behavior so carbonate bicarbonate would turn take the h positive and would make the carbonic acid and evolve out carbon dioxide so or sulfite or bisulfite or you can say nitrite this would produce a brown gas and uh, thiosulfate can come here or your sulfide ion or nitrite acetate ion these can come in all these category in 1b all annoyance all annoyance of class 1a along with it you would also see 
क्लोराइड ब्रोमाइड आयोडाइड बिकॉज हेयर यू वुड सी आफ्टर द एसिडिक अलॉन्ग विद द एसिडिक बिहेवियर हेयर यू वुड एड कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड सो कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड अलॉन्ग विद एन एसिड मे एक्ट ऑल्सो एज एन ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट तो वेन सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड इज बींग एडेड टू ब्रोमाइड एंड आयोडाइड बिकॉज दीज आर रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट दे विल इवॉल्व आउट हाइड्रोजन ब्रोमीन एंड आयोडीन गैस हेयर ऑल्सो यू वुड सी नाइट्रेट रिएक्शन विद नाइट्रेट और ऑक्जलेट एंड बोरेट ऑक्जलेट एंड बोरेट दीज वुड बोरेट वुड नॉट बी ऑफ दैट इंपॉर्टेंस इन द पेपर सो नाइट्रेट एंड ऑक्जलेट बट इन टू इन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ टू हेयर प्राइमेरली यू वुड बी डूइंग द प्रेसिपिटेशन विच आई ऑलरेडी हैव रेफर्ड द प्रेसिपिटेशन इन आइदर विद द there are lot many reagents but primarily if you could remember two silver nitrate and barium chloride then uh, mercury nitrate is also there barium chloride is also there magnesium chloride is also strontium chloride is also there so there are lead acetate is also there so lot of precipitating reagent is there but if you could remember the two uh, and how they are added and in what reaction condition the precipitate dissolves and not so that is the very important so here you would find majorly sulfate got precipitated uh, because it would not fall under the it, any category of acidic and redox uh, redox behavior phosphate in the same viewpoint phosphate can uh, can be seen a, a bit of in the acidic behavior also but primarily in the precipitation or chromate and dichromate but as regard to the 2b this primarily of uh, of the importance of redox reaction so here you would primarily in this classification of why i am little little you know apprehensive about this classification which is majorly be given in most of the books here in the redox we just have missed this part this actually is these anions are acting as a reducing agent nitrate is acting as an oxidizing agent so the point here is that you in totality you have to have the good concept on the viewpoint so next time we will be doing once again uh specifically now what are we are left with in the anion reading we will be doing specific uh testing of the anions and problem solving on this and thereafter we will do the cation analysis hope you have liked this uh, discussion which i just have made with you where anionic uh, uh classification is being done in a little unconventional way hope you like it and in case you find any sort of queries do ask me uh, i will revert to you very soon in the next video thanks a lot have a nice day stay safe and take good care of yourselves